Hi, I'm Suze Shaner with Sage Leadership Strategies, and I'm your host today of Community Forum. And I have the great pleasure to have with me Kristen Jensen of Kristen Jensen Productions, a serial entrepreneur and a woman of reinvention. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Suze. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Great to have you on the show. So, so, <laughs> yeah, so, so I wanted to have you on um, because I think you have a really interesting, great story of your career and I'll say work life journey. Um, and I'm wondering if you can give the viewers an overview of your background and kind of how you came to the work that you do today, which we'll talk about, but kind of tell us a little bit about your career. Well, I started on the other side of the camera. Um, it wasn't something that I really grew up wanting to be. I didn't think I would be a model or an actress. Um, my mother really encouraged me to do it. I think she was living vicariously through me and, and sort of pushed me into beauty contests, which I was petrified of doing. Really? Um, so you started, you started doing beauty contests at a young age? At a young, at 17. 17. And you didn't want yeah. to do it, but your mom said, no, go do it. Please do it. Please do it. And I shook like a leaf and I was petrified. I never won because obviously I was I was absolutely the worst. I, I couldn't speak and I was petrified. But one of the judges at, at one of the beauty contests uh, was a photographer and he said, I really want to photograph you. I think you would photograph great. And I'm like, okay. So my mother said, yes, let's go do it. And I did. And I looked at the pictures and I was like, you know, I. I couldn't even recognize myself. I, I didn't grow up really beautiful. I I was super skinny and awkward and and the pictures looked really pretty and, and were very beautiful and I secured an agent and then soon um, was scouted by an agent out of um, Paris. Hey, so Kristen, that's interesting. So you said that the first set of photos, you didn't even recognize yourself. No. So just, you knew it was you, but you were like, how did he get that from this? Because right. you didn't have the identity that, because obviously, I mean, I'm looking at you now, you look beautiful, but you, but you, you, you didn't have that self-identity that you were beautiful. Oh, no, it, 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 it took a long time. Listen, it's a work in progress. <laughs> it yeah. took a long time. You know, I mean, it really did. It, it just took a long time to understand that then and, and about 10 years into my career, I realized, you know, that people are paying me for what I look like. And, and this is what I do. I, I <laughs> wow, <laughs> I guess, I guess this is, uh, is my new career. So, yeah. So I started modeling, um, at 17 and went to Europe when I was 18. I went for, to just do the collections, uh, the shows and I was supposed to come home in six weeks, but I stayed a year and then I went back and I had a 20 year run. Uh, I traveled to 35 countries. Uh, I went all over the world modeling. And uh, so you, you you started it before you graduated high school. And right when, actually, I graduated high school when I was 17. Oh, so you had just graduated, and so this is what you, high school. Yeah. And this is what you did. This is I I wasn't I was going to go to college and study real estate. I grew up with a, a family in real estate and. I thought that's what I was going to do. And then one thing led to another and boom, I was in this sort of fast paced life and involving a lot of travel. And one thing led to another. And there you go. You know, I was off. 30, 20 years, 35 countries. It, yes. so here's my question for you. Um, it all sounds very glamorous. Um, I'm curious in terms of what was your experience of the experience at the time and, and what were some of your key learnings from this? You know, it, when I look back on it, yes, I guess it was glamorous. I, I think the silver lining was to travel. I mean, to be able to go to all those countries and see interesting things, even though I was working, you know, getting up at four o'clock in the morning and working all day. Uh, but I did try to take an extra day to go see, like when I was in Egypt, to go climb the pyramids, um, you know. So, oh, wow. and there was glamour, but you know what? It was really hard work. It was also hard to only and solely be judged on how you look. And basically your paycheck came in on based on what you look like. So that part was kind of the, the, the rub. Uh, yeah. the how did you balance that with trying to have 
kind of a keep it perspective and have like a sense of balance and health in your life with that? You know, I think it's it's having good roots and family and friends having really good. I've had really good friends, like childhood friends that I still have. Um, just staying rooted and grounded um, kept me really focused. I had to reinvent myself constantly as a model and repackage myself. My hair was short. My hair was long. Um, I was a little heavier. I was a little thinner. I marketed myself uh, to in, into the catalog world, which doesn't seem that glamorous, but the catalogs are actually the most lucrative paying jobs. And um, they're the ones that took me all over the world and I traveled. So that part was really cool. Well, who knew that about the catalogs? That's interesting because people always think, well, it's better to be in vogue than the catalogs. But in terms of that, this being your job, like a working model and earning your livelihood, you're saying, no, this is actually kind of good bread and butter. Oh, it's, it's the bread and butter. I mean, the magazines pay around $100, $100 a day to $150 for the day. And the catalogs start at $1,500 a day. So, but the, the, but the glitch is you have to have the magazines to get the catalogs. So yeah. Yeah. it's, you know, that's what you have to do. That's part of, part, part of it. No, but people have a misconception about catalog modeling and there's just tons of, tons of girls and guys doing it. And, um, it's, it's, it was a way to see the world. I don't know what's happening now with how the world is now with the modeling and, and traveling like that. I'm sure things have significantly changed. Um, but back then, that's what we did. Yeah. And so it, so you said it was a way to see the world. And how interesting. I mean, obviously, it sounds grueling in a way. I mean, grueling. I mean, very long days. You always have to look on, always have to look pretty. So we have this like it's very glamorous, but you're you're working. At the same time, you were able to be in these countries. And it sounds like here and there take some time where you could really see the country and see the sites. What was your, um, do you have a, like a favorite country that you went to? I love Italy. Um, I went to Italy, I mean, 20, 30 times. Um, so I've been all over Italy. I love France. Paris is my favorite city in the world still. Um, I loved, I mean, I mentioned Egypt. It was fascinating. Um, I've been to Asia. It, it's all really, I, I would say probably Italy is my favorite. And then you said, interesting. So you said, um, then you always had to reinvent yourself, meaning um, were you working through an agency or was always like freelance contracting? You always had to get the next gig or, or you were hired out through an agency. So was it, how did it work kind of that way? Yeah. So the way the business works is that a, modeling, a model has to work through an agent. So the agent is actually the clients call the agent when they have a breakdown or a casting or looking for a certain type. And so everything goes through the agency. The agency takes a commission from you and from the client. So the agencies actually make pretty good money, mm -hmm. uh, but you can't really do it without a really good agent. And I was with Ford models for many years and with affiliate agencies based out of Europe that worked with Ford. So that was my, my connection. So it's not like, it's not like you had like an ongoing steady paycheck. You were paid by the gig, right? Like by the, the project. Exactly. You're, you're, you're self-employed um, and you are paid by, by the job. So if you don't work that day, but if you're not working that day, you're actually out going out and meeting clients in person, which they call go sees or casting. So you're constantly going out and meeting people and trying to get the next one. So you know? really, I mean, that's interesting. Get the next one because really yeah. starting from 17, your whole work life, has been about being self-employed. Correct. Yes. So, so really, so, I mean, let's talk about that for a minute. So, so you went from your modeling days and then you shifted gears. Can you tell us about how that happened and, and what you did in that process and why you landed where you landed? I started um, very late in my modeling career. I started videotaping every job I was on from my perspective. And later I collected all the footage and I had people sign releases and I put together a video called The Art of Modeling. And I won awards for that. And I got a real taste of what it was like to be on the other side of the camera and be in an editing room and work with producers and 
and I put together a project and that that really just inspired me so much to to want to start my own uh, business. I became a photographer because I was lucky. I was able to photograph my portfolio at the beginning of my career. I was able to photograph beautiful people. Um, and I was on jobs and I took my camera with me everywhere. And one thing led to another and I started building my portfolio as a photographer, but I really didn't become quote a photographer until I worked with a career coach uh, around the time my son was born, which was about 19 years ago. Can I just pause there for one yes. sec before we go on to that chapter? Yes. Um, because something you just mentioned, I think is a little unusual um, in that, so you were, behind, you were in front of the camera all these years, and then at some point in your career, you became interested in that whole process. And to create this video, about it's kind of like the day in the life of the world of a model, the modeling world. Like, how interesting is that for you to show a view, have that 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 literal and figurative lens perspective of this is what it's like behind the camera. I, I haven't really do do many models go this route. I haven't really heard that too often. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> right. So probably not. It was a, it was just a crazy thing to do. Listen, I was bored sometimes. I was on shoots for long hours waiting in between things. And so I thought I could put something together. It was a creative outlet for me. Yeah. And so I just went around with my Hi8 video camera at that time and shot everything. I wound up with 60 or 70 hours of footage and cut it down to a 50 minute how to video of how to break into the business. That's um, incredible. I mean, from yeah. multiple standpoints, one, the fact that just production wise that you did that Two, it's a great um, educational piece, tutorial, whatever on that. Um, oh, oh, Dave is saying, <laughs> thanks, Dave, that Tyra Banks went from model to photographer and TV show producer. Yeah. I mean, so we've got you and Tyra Banks. You're right there with Tyra Banks. Right, right, right. That's good. <laughs> you know. But, but you did it before Tyra, I think. Did you not? <laughs> Probably. Okay. You did it before Tyra. But, but I think that that's really, that's really interesting. You know, and so, so not only were you kind of able to express your own creativity, you're able to help other models out. And it was kind of the entree to this next phase of your career. So now you were saying, okay, maybe I do want to be behind the camera. Okay, so now fast forward. Okay, I just I just had to pause there because I was like, that was really cool. I just wanted to recognize you for that. Yeah. And now tell us about your, your work with the career coach. Like, how did you even think it, that you needed to go talk to a career coach about this? Well, um, about 19 years ago, 20, my son is 19, and um, I was – in a terrible relationship, marriage, and I wanted to um, get out of it. It wasn't really healthy for me to be in. It was actually a scary situation. And, and so I left. And at that point, I was living in the suburbs. I didn't know anybody. I was a single mom, something I didn't consciously plan. And, and your, son, your son was an infant when you were single mom, infant, right? Yes, right. So he was like three four months old and I, I worked with a, a woman who I actually modeled with and she became a career coach. And this is when career coaching, nobody even heard of the word. Um, and so I started working with her and I was trying to decide like, listen, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't have family that live here. I'm originally from California. Everybody's on the West coast. I'm in the East coast. I'm by myself. And so I had to really regroup. And I worked with a career coach, which I recommend for anybody that's like in flux or not sure about what they want to do. And I honed in a punch list of what my skills were. And it always came up to being a photographer, being a videographer. That's what all everything pointed in that direction. And I thought, well, how am I going to do that living out in the suburbs? You know, I was used to big cities and I don't know how I can compete with those people, you know. But I didn't realize that there was so much business here, right? And, and this was in Ridgefield at the time, uh, Ridgefield, Connecticut. I did not realize there was that much business. So I started my business. Uh, for the first six months, I didn't charge anybody anything. I didn't feel confident enough to charge. How generous is that of you? Well, maybe it was generous. I was, I was honestly too insecure at that point to charge. 
I, I just, I couldn't, I, I had to build up my portfolio. Once I did that and I felt confident and even the customers and clients that I first, when I, I photographed that six or nine months prior came back to me and were sending me business. So I thought, no, this is good. I think I'm on to something. Yeah, yeah. So, so really it was an investment in a startup, not only to get the, the word out there um, and get your credibility. Um, so you had some good referral, but it sounds like also your confidence. It, 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 I needed it for my confidence. I did. Yeah. And so it all came back to you, sounds like. It, it did. And so I just started at my business and I started doing weddings. Um, I felt like I want to go into something that is recession proof and uh, that I could work on weekends and be at home with my son during the week. And so that's what I did. And I started doing weddings and, you know, to date have shot over 500 weddings um, even wrote a book on wedding photography, how to break into be a wedding photographer uh, and start your own home business. But what happened was is that I was gone every weekend. I was gone Friday nights, all day Saturday and Sundays. And I have a little guy that I'm raising and I miss his baseball games. I missed everything. And I said, you know what? I can't do this. Oh. I, I, just, I just can't. I, I have no life. And so I started figuring out what I wanted to do as far as what can I shoot and what can I do and what can I bring to the table during the week, Monday through Friday. And that's kind of where I am today. Listen, I still work on weekends and still do stuff, but you know, the, the, the bulk of my business is done Monday through Friday. Well, it's pretty incredible. So first of all, having an infant, that in, even of itself is a huge deal. First time parent and then being a single parent. You know, I was a single parent since my daughter was six months old. So I, I get it. I get it. I really get it. I mean, and your guy was only a few months old. So it, it, it's incredible what how you were able to pivot and what you were able to do. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious because you were a single parent pretty much the whole time that you raised him. Yes. Um, and you were able to navigate this successful livelihood and really kind of come out of all of that. Um, what do you attribute your being able to do all this? I mean, obviously you're incredibly resourceful, you're incredibly creative, but what kind of helped you? I'm sure you had some, some angst and some dark moments. I mean, it would be not realistic to say you didn't, right? Like, like what, what really helped you kind of work this? I'm, I'm telling you, I mean, I, it was, it was some of the, the darkest times in self soul searching that I've ever done in my life. I mean, I'm not a religious person. I didn't grow up in a religious family, but what, what absolutely helped me and, and saved me and kept me on track was prayer and having a relationship with God and, and praying and having friends that were there that helped me hiring great nannies, having people, having great childcare. But what kept me sane was, was, was the inner life, the meditation and the prayer and having faith that if I didn't have that, I don't know how I would have done it, honestly. So it sounds like while you're saying you're not religious, you clearly are very spiritual. Yes. Yes. I, I believe in God. I believe and a higher power, I believe. I believe in 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 prayer and uh, and meditation and 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 just giving it over, and asking and listening to your intuition and asking for that voice and, and listening to your own voice and saying, you know, God, what 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 can I do? How do I get out of this? Um, it there was some really rough times, uh, very very challenging times, and somehow I was working. I was working eighty hours a week back then. Wow. And so you must have had really good childcare because I mean, it was really pretty much the parenting was mostly on you. Right. So you must have had really a really good nanny that you liked and trusted that had a. I had a couple of them. Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple right. of them. But, you know, uh, the, the you know, my son's father was out of the picture, so to speak. So there was no every other weekend. There was nothing. It was 24 seven from day one. And uh, yeah, I. You know, I found really good people. I did. I had really good people. I had some neighbors. They, they were like pseudo grandparents to Noah. Uh, uh, just, well, well, so let's talk. So it sounds incredible. I mean, so let's talk about your your current business um, and the work that you're doing now. You've actually you're still doing some photography. I, I don't know if you're doing any more weddings anymore, are you? But you're doing you're doing the personal branding. Can you talk a little bit more about that? 
Yes. Yeah, so the personal branding um, evolved totally organically. It was really when I made a shift and a decision to not focus 1000% on weddings and that I want to help people with their, their image. And I had a campaign that was called Image is Everything. People make a decision about you and your picture in two tenths of a second online. So I thought, wait a minute, there's a, a business here and there's something that I can do to help people. And so I started doing a lot of headshots, LinkedIn pictures. And then I would have my clients and customers say, you know, I'm not sure about a logo. Do you think I need one? And I'd say, okay, I can help you with that. <laughs> and I would do that. And then recently uh, a lot of people have asked me about websites and, you know, can you help me put a website together? But, but really the biggest increase in my business over the last, I would say six to seven years and, and really this year, significantly even during COVID is video and video is so powerful and uh, it is small businesses to entrepreneurs to people with personal brands are looking for videos so that's really I would say I'm doing about 60% video and the rest is photography or a combination of photography and video okay so how do you help somebody go about crystallizing their personal brand you know, the first thing I have to do is really get to know them or their business. I have to sit down and have a discovery. I, I, I can't even put together a proposal without understanding really where someone is. And a lot of people might not even know. They might be at the career coach phase where they're not even sure what it is. So they may need the career coach first and then come back to me. Uh, but but I really take my time and, and get to know that particular potential client or client so that I can better understand who they are, help them understand who they are, and then convey that through video and photography or whatever medium that they're looking for. So you sound like just in terms of hearing your whole story, yeah. you're always there right in the moment. Oh, I could do that. I could do that. And, and even it sounds like the way you are with your clients around personal branding, you really tap a lot into your intuition and you've got some good good instincts it sounds like that you listen to most importantly that you listen to i i have learned to listen to it um again learn to listen to that inner voice and tap into to my intuition and just say you know what i do know i do feel this is right for this person or this is how i see it and and just to be able to voice that i mean it's such a a leaf turn from the first you know from being 17 years old for the first 20 years of my career not having a voice and now being able to have one. And wow, say, you know, wait a minute. This is like the core yeah. of your story. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting here, but whoa. Because the first part of your career, just just all this photo looking at you, kind of how, your looks, and you couldn't say anything. Right. 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 Now you're on the other side of the camera. You're directing people. You're, you're bringing your voice into the picture. Say more about that, that story, that evolution there. Yep. So, so, you know, imagine for that many years, 20 years being based and, and told you're beautiful and here's your, here's the money and, but don't say anything. Do not say anything. Do not tell us if you're sick or sad or whatever. You're not allowed. Wow. Perfect. Then I jumped to this side of the camera where I am now and I have a voice. I have, I, maybe my idea is okay. Someone's listening. This is good. So uh, it, it, it's, it's so completely opposite of where I've started, but it, it's really, I've come into my own and I found my calling. Whoa, Kristen. Oh my gosh. That is so powerful. Now, what advice would you give someone who's grappling with this? What's my calling? How do I find my calling? Or who's, who's, who's struggling, particularly in this economy? Like, what's your advice for a, a fellow entrepreneur? I, I, I really believe in the career coaching and the coaching. I, I'm a big, you know, I, I would say if, if you're unsure or if you're thinking about three different things and you're not sure what to go for and you're talented and probably multi-talented in a lot of different areas, but you've got to find one pocket area is to really find a professional that you can work with that can help you sort that out so that you can get really clear because you can't, if you're not clear, nobody else is. Nobody else is going to get your message if you don't have your message in a clear way. The next thing is no matter what your business is, it's, it's, it's protecting and managing your personal brand. So 
you know, managing your assets, your pictures, what you what you put out there, what you put on social media, understanding that that stays forever. Uh, putting together a plan that might involve coming up with a company name, a tagline. I'm talking to entrepreneurs, uh, but it may be, you know, you're working for a corporation or you want to jump and work for another corporation. You still have to package yourself. So those visuals and assets are really important. That's fantastic. Clear, concise. And it sounds like what you got from working with a coach is clarity that really helped you figure out your path forward. Totally. And so um, where do you hope to take your work? You, you're, you're the mother of reinvention here, as we've seen. You know, I'll constantly, okay. But it, it's all evolving in a similar space. But what's your thinking now in terms of your trajectory? I would say that the, the more virtual my business could be, the, the better off. And I'm sure a lot of us, like millions of us feel that way. Like, wow, how could I be in a virtual business right now? Um, yes, I ha I'm on shoots and I have to be there and I'm in person and I'm wearing masks and I'm working, thankfully. But, you know, what else can I do to set that up to even be more virtual in helping people? And, and that may be more a lot more consulting work. I'm not sure what that looks like. Yeah. Um, what yeah. we're going to see, I, I, I recoined my business, Kristen Jensen Lifestyles. That's what it is on Instagram. Um, so it is more about lifestyle. It's improving your lifestyle and, and helping you do that. So I, I'm, I'm kind of poking at it and we'll see where it takes me. Oh, okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Cause I think I introduced you as Kristen Jensen Productions, but it's Kristen Jensen Lifestyles. It, it is on Instagram and, it, and it's something that came, I, I came up with last year. <laughs> so okay. I'm in so in the spirit of ongoing evolution and reinvention, here we yes. go. Production yes. to lifestyles, which is yes. really the name of the game. Okay, we've got one minute left. Um, is, if someone wanted to reach you or talk about anything we talked about today, how would they contact you? You can always find me via my website, which is kristenjensen.com. Or you can email me at kristen at kristenjensen.com. Okay, so and, and folks can see your name right on the screen so they know how to spell it. So kristenjensen.com. Okay, Kristen, listen, may have to have you on again as you move through the next evolution of your career. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right. That's life, right? Yes, it's just well. constantly moving. Right? Okay, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, thank you. Absolutely. I'm Susan Shaner with Community Forum. Until next time, thank you for joining us.